everybody. I'd just like to welcome everybody to this phone bank. This is our day of action for the Affordable Care Act. Uh, this is SEIU UHW San Francisco office. We're a healthcare workers union representing about 90,000 members in California and we've been hosting a series of these Affordable Care Act um, call-in days. So thank you so much for joining us for this event. I'd like to introduce a very special guest who is coordinating this particular day of action with us and that's Mayor Ed Lee. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thanks for being here. Let me first of all thank the United Healthcare uh, Workers uh, West uh, for letting us join them in this uh, multi-state call day for action to save our health care. I want to also recognize Supervisor Jeff Sheehy, uh, to, uh, Board of Supervisors, who is uh, someone that's well informed about this issue, having worked in and around health care for a good part of his life. Uh, and we'll have, uh, I think, some good information to share. I'm joined by department heads uh, that are uh, directly involved in the Affordable Care Act and uh, are uh, uh, originally uh, Healthy San Francisco and now, of course, are covered California for San Francisco. Barbara Garcia, who's our head of our Department of Public Health. Shereen McFadden, who's our Department of Aging. Um, then I uh, want to say we're also joined by uh, some very important partners in our uh, uh, ongoing uh, to, to make sure everybody's health, women's health, LGBTQ health, uh, immigrant health are all covered, and that is uh, Planned Parenthood. Gilda, thank you very much for being part of this. And of course, our uh, community's uh, uh, consortium, clinic consortium, is here as well. Uh, we're in a fight. We're in a fight. Uh, with uh, the administration and Congress over saving health care for millions of people. And uh, I'm here to express that San Francisco wants to save health care for all people, not just in San Francisco, but the entire state of California that has over 5 million people enrolled in covered California. Uh, of course, the 20 million people that have been enrolled uh, in the Affordable Care Act that President Obama had started. Uh, we should not repeal this uh, law and this program without an adequate explanation and a replacement of the programs because I'll tell you why. We're lucky to be in California where so many people do have health care coverage and they earned it and they worked hard for it. I'm a little more lucky because in San Francisco uh, we had a human services, uh, health services agency, uh, as well as a public health agency that worked really hard together as a team to enroll 93,000 people uh, into uh, the Medi-Cal program, and therefore that's why we have 133,000 people that are covered by Covered California in our city. And it's, a, it's a really hard to do this, but it's a reflection of our city's commitment that we care about health. You know, we just celebrated uh, the year of the rooster, and if you listen carefully you didn't have to listen in Mandarin Cantonese to understand that right after people said the Happy Lunar New Year, they said, uh, good luck for your health. Uh, it's called San Tai Gin Hong. And that means it's so important, everybody, that you have good health to begin the year, to be with your family, uh, uh, to be able to work. And this is why we've uh, been able and successful to enroll so many people, uh, because it's important. I had an opportunity today to, as part of this action team, to literally learn in detail uh, what it takes for a city like ours to actually provide that health. First of all, I began this morning with uh, the HSA and uh, public health to look at how we enroll people, and we uh, thanked the team of people that uh, were really the cause of being able, in multiple languages, in multiple locations, to be able to enroll over 93,000 people uh, in our uh, Medi-Cal uh, extension program. Uh, and if it wasn't for that team uh, being as culturally competent as they are and beyond a community-based, uh, that result would not have happened. We were probably the best example of how the Affordable Care Act uh, would be successful. I think the state of California is to be congratulated as well. Um, and then I went on to uh, one of our clinics one of our, I think there's 12 to 14 community-based clinics uh, that I'm very proud of. This was the Maxine Hall Clinic in the Western Edition that has some 4,000 patients that they built up over the years. I went there because I wanted to hear firsthand 
what it means to people before they had health coverage and now after. And I hear story after story. And here, here's the lesson that I, I learned uh, from these stories. You know, fear does a lot of things to you, and that's why I work so hard to remove fear from people that want to live in San Francisco. Uh, one of the areas of fear is that if something happens to you, whether it's a medical condition or otherwise, people fear going to doctors and hospitals because they think they'll never be able to afford it. Because prior to the ACA, one medical episode would literally put you in jeopardy of bankruptcy. There were no standards at the time. And all of that got cleared up and we built with our labor unions, our community-based clinics, a whole system of care where people didn't have to fear that and they can be enrolled and they can start not just treating and responding to a particular episode, but the more important thing is to have ongoing coverage so that issues like diabetes, which I heard at least two stories about uh, this afternoon, or aneurysms that may not have caused death, but people didn't know what they were, could get checked out, can get treated, but then there's ongoing treatment. It never ends with just one treatment. And so these episodes were explained to me. In fact, I even had an 11-year-old uh, that was presented to me with a four-pages petition signed and a cover letter that will break your heart that said that she, uh, Hope Van Riesen was her name, and she wrote to me about her brother and how he needed this coverage in order to afford all the medicines to treat. And she didn't want her brother uh, to continue living in pain or without that coverage. Uh, to uh, a mother uh, who uh, wasn't there, but uh, she got treated, and now she wasn't there because she's working. I like that. I didn't have to see real people, but I had to hear these stories uh, because prior to that coverage and prior to someone's uh, brother uh, who didn't know about the Affordable Care Act getting coverage, these people would have been in complete economic and health devastation. And this is what we wanted to do today, present these stories. And quite frankly, they're not just stories. They're about lives. They're about uh, whether we care about people or not. These are real episodes in people's lives that we care about in San Francisco. They're real. They're not alternative facts. They're real because people lived through them. They, they really understood after they got coverage what their fear was doing to their health, to their economics. And now you have 93,000 people. And in San Francisco, you have about 133,000 people who don't necessarily live in fear of not having health coverage anymore. And I, I think that's so important, so life-saving, that I wanted to make sure I appeared here to join all of these other volunteers at the United Healthcare Workers uh, Office to call uh, elected officials who are uh, attempting uh, to repeal the ACA without an adequate replacement or without any discussion about what we should do to reduce this fear. Uh, I want to say thank you to every one of these volunteers here today because we're calling uh, Congress people, elected people in the states of Nevada, the states of uh, Arizona, and then right here in California, which I will expect to make a call myself. Because I'm joining mayors across the country, I'm joining mayors in the state of California to say, not, let's not repeal this law that's so valuable in saving people's lives, that has become such a, such a foundation of hope for themselves, their families, allow people to work to really join this incredible economy that we have in the Bay Area and the state. And they wouldn't be able to do that unless they had some path forward to take care of their health or their family's health. This is one of the, I think, the most important things we can do to improve people's lives. And I know uh, Jeff knows this as well. We're elected officials. We always ask ourselves, probably at the beginning of our careers, but also at the beginning of every day, how am I supposed to help people? I think health is one of those groundbreakings. We're doing housing, we're doing employment, doing transportation. But if we don't take care and remove the fear of the lack of health coverage, we will have d done a really big disservice to so many people. So I, I want to say thank you again, and we're going to take this day of action, move it forward, and make my calls. Uh, but I want you to know how personal it is to me uh, because I do come from a culture where you're supposed to take care of your health first. 
can't help anybody unless you yourself are healthy. And this is what it means t to everybody else. So uh, with that, let me uh, introduce Gilda from our Planned Parenthood. And thank you very much for your leadership as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, so much. Thank you. I'm Gilda Gonzalez, Interim CEO of Planned Parenthood in Northern California, and it's really a great honor to be here standing with our brothers and sisters uh, with UHW as well as other leaders in healthcare. So uh, as you all know, Planned Parenthood is in the crosshairs of this administration, but we are no stranger to adversity. Three women, three brave women, opened the first clinic in Brooklyn in 1916 and were arrested soon after. And so it's never been easy for us over the last uh, 100 years. But we know this fight, and more importantly, we know how to survive. So we're ready to fight, and we're ready to fight because of the 100,000 uh, patients we see on an annual basis to, that come to us in some of the most vulnerable moments of their lives, and we're gonna be here for them no matter what. And the 55,000 uh, other young people that we educate in the schools, providing them answers and much needed information that they wouldn't get otherwise. And the other 70,000 people that we've activated through our movement building. So we know that the fight is worth it and we're gonna be here no matter what. And Mr. Mayor, I heard you say this uh, recently, but I've picked it up, so excuse me, because we won't go back and we won't back down. Not now, not ever. So it's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dina Lon, and I represent the San Francisco Community Clinic Consortium. Um, our 11 members are the major nonprofit community clinics serving San Francisco's diverse population. Uh, we serve about 100,000 patients a year, which is about 10%, a little over 10% of San Francisco's population. So along with our partners um, that are all represented here today, um, we feel like we do a really great job in providing good preventive care and connecting people to a really excellent system of care. Um, community clinics are unique because we offer high quality preventive care regardless of ability to pay. But, like other medical practices, we've advanced a lot from the years ago, 50 years ago when we were founded. Now we have advanced medical practices with using data to improve the quality of care, and we use evidence-based programs to invest in specific interventions to ward off or manage expensive diseases. So we have become modernized. Uh, the only, but we are like the community clinics of old still in that we welcome everybody to our doors and we have a lot of language and cultural diversity so that all people in San Francisco feel comfortable coming to us. Um, I've personally worked on healthcare coverage for about 30, 20 years, and nothing makes me angrier than a politician who says, well, if you get hit by a car and break a leg, you can just go to the emergency room and get it fixed. Well, the vast majority of people do not get hit by a car, although if I do, I hope they bring me to Zuckerberg, San Francisco General. Um, however, the vast majority of people do need patient-centered, comprehensive, culturally appropriate care. They need things like counseling about nutrition so they avoid diabetes later in life. They need behavioral assessments and treatment so that depression doesn't ruin their lives. They need something as basic as fluoride varnish for their children provided right alongside their pediatric care because that very inexpensive and easy intervention can help ward off painful and expensive dental caries for the rest of their lives. If the ACA, including the incredibly important Medi-Cal expansion, goes away, some number of clinics would survive. We don't know how many. But the ability of our clinics to continually improve quality and to encourage patients to come in for this evidence-based preventive care will be completely crippled. Um, from the financial point of view, here in San Francisco, our clinics provide over 800 middle-class jobs. We have training programs so that often people who have been served by our clinics actually come back and work, which is really great. Um, Health center medical patients on average have 22% lower cost than other um, providers. So there is a large savings to the Medicaid program and to the system as a whole. In San Francisco, we are lucky enough to have the Healthy San Francisco program that's a safety net for those who are not eligible for um, the exchanges, private insurance, or Medi-Cal. But that doesn't really give much funding to the community clinics. What gives money to community clinics is Medi-Cal. The Medi-Cal expansion particularly has been incredibly important, as well as a federal grant to health centers that is also threatened um, in this day. Preliminary projections are that without the ACA and with a possible 70% reduction in the health care grant 
Just here in San Francisco, 500 jobs would be lost and over 41,000 patients would need to seek care elsewhere. The result, $60 million in higher cost to the health system. I'm gonna close with the words of a working mother in the years before the expansion of health coverage to all children in California. This particular family had two sick children, one chronic and one acute. When the parents had to pay for urgent care for their usual healthy child who had pneumonia, their other child with Tourette's and ADHD had to go without medication for a month, resulting in a significant increase in symptoms. This is the mom's words. Having to choose one child's medication over another for financial reasons was one of the worst decisions of my life. My heart sank. I was really devastated. It was so hard to watch him. He couldn't sit still for more than five seconds. It was a parent's worst nightmare. Stopping his medication really sent him over the edge, but what could we do? Our hands were tied. We have made so much progress nationally and particularly here in California and San Francisco, and we cannot go back just because some politicians, thankfully none of ours in San Francisco, think it's expedient to dismiss the need for equal access to health care. Thanks to all of you here today for working to make sure that we don't go backwards. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Maria Ryerson. I work at St. Francis Memorial Hospital. I work for EVS Environmental Services. Um, if the Affordable Care Act is overturned, it's gonna cause a lot of harm. I'm speaking personally. Um, my fiance's name is Juan. He was a maintenance worker, had a full-time job, but his job did not give him um, health coverage. So I told him to sign up for the Affordable Care Act. Um, he told me he didn't need it. He said, I'm a man, I don't need it. So I said, okay, well, he signed up in 2014. I was very grateful for that. However, December 2015, he was rushed to the emergency room where um, we thought he was having a heart attack. Um, they admitted him into the hospital where they found out later that he just had high blood pressure, some other medical issues, and um, you know, we were grateful for that. However, um, the health coverage at the time meant the world to us because Juan's bill was so enormous that there was no way that I could afford to pay it and there was no way for him to pay it. The Affordable Care Act helped my fiance stay alive and to get healthy. So today he's doing great, he takes his medication, he does his regular doctor visits and you know what, all thanks to the Affordable Care Act. Um, I want everyone to be able to keep their health care coverage. No one should have to live in fear of becoming sick and not being able to have somewhere to go that's affordable. Um, so that's why I'm here today. I'm calling voters today and I'm asking them to contact their elected officials to protect the Affordable Care Act. We need this law to keep people healthy and we need to give people a sense of hope and we need to keep it for people like Juan because if he didn't have it, things could have been really bad so I'm here and I'm asking everyone to just support the Affordable Care Act because as a community, we need it. And as Americans, we need it. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Barbara Garcia. I'm the health director of San Francisco. And as health director, it's my obligation to ensure the health of everyone in San Francisco. So it is my job to ensure that we protect health care. And the health department with its 8,000 employees, two hospitals and over 24 clinics have been providing care for dozens of years in the city. Over 12 years ago, we developed Healthy San Francisco to ensure that everyone had access to health care. And then the ACA just really enhanced that. So it's so important for us to protect the ACA. Just recently, over the last five years, we have received over a billion dollars of voters from the voters to um, build a new trauma center and to rebuild some of our existing clinics. As uh, the mayor was talking about today, one of those is Maxine Hall. We have an obligation to protect the infrastructure of the healthcare system in San Francisco. And today I'm here to ensure that I support the union work that they're doing in calling our representatives. And it's our obligation, the 8,000 employees of the department I know behind me, to ensure that we work hard at trying to ensure that we save the ACA, to ensure that everyone in San Francisco uh, gets access to incredible care. We do not want people going to an emergency room. We want them to have primary care homes. And that's what we're 
we're going to try to protect, and that's what we're all here to do. And we will fight to ensure for all San Franciscans. It's my personal obligation, and it's the obligation of the health department to ensure that we protect the health care for all in San Francisco. So thank you very much. Good afternoon. I'm Shireen McSpadden. I'm the director of the Department of Aging and Adult Services in San Francisco. Just want to thank um, UHW for having this event and for the mayor um, for having a day of action. So I just want to highlight really quickly two things that the Affordable Care Act has done for seniors and people with disabilities. The first is um, our department administers the in-home supportive services program for San Francisco. We serve over 23, over just under 23,000 people in that program and the workers are are um, represented by UHW. And what Medi-Cal expans expansion has allowed is for almost 1,000 people, 900 plus people, to be able to access in-home supportive services. These are people who, um, without in-home supportive services, would be at risk of institutionalization. And what the Medi-Cal expansion has afforded them is up to a, an average of 20 hours of home care a week, which would have costed them probably about $3,000 a month. And we know people on Medi-Cal, even expanded Medi-Cal, really can't afford that. So it's been, um, it's really allowed people to stay in their homes. We know 31% of those people are um, Asian Pacific Islander, 20% of those people are African American, and those are populations that we really want to keep um, living in San Francisco, we want to keep it affordable, so that really helps that. In addition, the Affordable Care Act has given some um, some more heft to Medicare. So Medicare benefits that have been added are wellness screenings for people who just come on to Medicare. They get a free, or free, they get, uh, as part of Medicare, they get um, a screening initially. But it also allows for annual visits, and it allows for cancer screenings and mammograms and things like that that are really critical to people's safety and health. So um, I just want to thank, thank Mayor Lee for having this event, and thank you, HW, and um, good afternoon. Hi, I'm Supervisor Jeff Sheehy, and um, you know I ha I both approach this from a policy point of view, but also from a personal point of view. So when I was first diagnosed 20 years ago with HIV, I didn't have insurance, and one of the reasons I didn't get tested until I was really starting to get sick was I didn't have insurance, and um, I know what that feels like to, to to not feel well, not know what to do, not know where to go, and to not have an option. I also know that feeling, having gone to see a doctor, and luckily uh, Castro Mission Health Center Number One was where I presented, that relief when you actually can see a doctor and you can actually get care. And I actually spent a night in uh, San Francisco General in the ER. And I know the care that we provide here, which is outstanding. But then fast forward now, you know, 20 years later, with the Affordable Care Act, we have, we've been able to really think and start to achieve big goals. There's a national movement to end HIV, to get to zero. Why is that possible? Medicaid expansion. So everybody can get coverage because you can uh, go on the exchanges and get coverage. We know if we treat people for HIV, it makes them much less likely to infect people. We know uh, that we have a preventative pill that makes it hard for people to transmit the virus. In San Francisco, we have our Getting to Zero campaign, which we're following on with a campaign to end hepatitis, right? Again, a disease for which there's a cure that we can end as long as we have payers, and it costs out. If people don't have their livers fail, if they don't uh, stop working, if they don't uh, uh, have to get a transplant, that's much cheaper. Likewise, San Francisco just started San Francisco CAN, which is, a, again, it's a multi-sector approach to try to reduce cancers that impact our most marginalized communities. All of these big vision ideas are only really possible within the construct of ACA. And, and lastly, I just want to say how great it is for calling uh, other congressmen. Uh, I, I heard this great statistic, which was also horrifying, um, uh, that... 51% of the individuals in Bakersfield get their health care either through Medi-Cal or, Medi uh, or Medicare. And just to remind people, Medicare is next. The Ryan budget proposes a voucher, pro a voucher program for, for Medicare. 
and it's amazing that they, they're, they're voting Republicans. And I wonder if these Republicans who are supporting this really understand the consequences of the rhetoric and the path that they're taking for their very own constituents. So thank you, uh, UHW, for being here and doing this today. And let's inform those voters. And let's inform the congressmen. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out here today. And thank you so much to all of our speakers and our community partners. Um, and now it is time to actually get on the phones and make this work happen. Yeah.